it might help, at least for some of you, to think of it this way. If you can recall trips made in your childhood, perhaps especially, to favorite places when you were going on holiday or on a day trip. You so enjoyed the place to which you were going and your time there that even as a child you knew the road. You maybe even knew all the towns and little villages you went through. Because you didn't drive, you didn't take much interest in towns and the geography of the land. But you knew that road and you knew the corners because that was the way that led to somewhere you really wanted to go. A happy sort of destination. Well, this is something like what the psalmist is saying. He says that he loves God's tabernacles in verse 1. He longs to be there. Verse 2. And then he says that he even envies the little birds that make their nests around the tabernacle. <clears throat> and out of such a frame of mind, he says that even the ways, the roads, the highways, the paths, the little towns that he goes through to get to the tabernacle are precious to him. They're in his heart. He wants to get to God's tabernacle and in his heart are all the ways and roads that lead up to it. Because they are the pathways to Jehovah's presence. And of course there's a word for us here in this. This is the sort of love that we need for God's public worship in his house. This is the desire and the longing which we should have for hearing his word, for coming together to praise him and singing the songs of Zion, and for partaking of the sacraments, and especially now this morning, the Holy Supper of the Lord Jesus. And out of such a love for these things, that even the ways to the church's worship are in our heart. We know the way. And we love to go that particular way because we rejoice in the Lord. So that we don't say, well, it's an awful long way to go to church. I'm sick of traveling up and down that road. But I even love the road which leads to church, so to speak. Because it leads to public worship. Where I can join with the fellow saints and draw near to God in the ordinances of worship. And blessed is the man whose strength is in the Lord, in whose heart are the ways. In his heart, not just God, not just public worship, but for their sakes, even the road that leads to public worship. It's in his heart. And there's a word, of course, here too, for the children. We don't want you to say, and you ought to feel bad if you do say, though we understand, because we were once children too. Oh, but do I have to go to church? Shouldn't say that. And if you find yourself thinking that, even as children, you have a certain amount of self-control, and you can stop yourself from saying that, because you understand that that reveals a problem. That reveals a problem with the heart. With the heart. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways. I like to be there. I'm not going to complain or moan about it. And sadly, this is what happens to some children of the church. When they grow up and have greater freedom, they then stop coming to public worship. To use the terms of verse 5, the problem was the praise of God and the ways to his house were never really in their heart. When they were under their parents and had it to do, they went. But whenever it was on their own path, they stopped. They didn't take Jehovah as their strength because they were foolish and thought themselves strong in themselves. And they were not blessed. But blessed is the man whose strength is in thee and who has the ways to go up to God's house in his heart. 
but if it isn't in your heart and the Lord isn't your strength, you're not blessed. And if you perceive the truth of Jesus Christ and his church completely and do not come back if you depart that way, then you're not blessed at all. You're cursed. Because that's the option. The man who has his strength in Jehovah, he's blessed. And everybody else who doesn't have a heart like that, they're cursed. Because there only are two ways. There's no common grace in the middle. <coughs> Blessed or cursed. There were two mountains. Gerizim and Ebal. Curses read out for those who broke God's law. And blessings for those who were faithful in Jesus Christ. And there wasn't any third mountain in between it. A sort of a hillock of common grace. Just two. Blessing and curse. And then we could think too about confessing members because our children have the same sins to battle with as we do as we do confessing members who needlessly absent themselves from church services that's a bad sign a very bad sign attendance begins to fall away and they don't have reasons for not being there proper reasons all they have is excuses which pass themselves for reasons in your own mind and in the mind of other people. There's a difference between an excuse and a valid reason. And the excuse comes in because it only takes the slightest wee thing to put you off coming. And that's backsliding. And being not like verse 5. God's ways at least temporarily, are not really in your heart. The ways up to public worship. Jehovah isn't really your strength. You've been deceived. And you think something else is more powerful, more powerful to make you satisfied and happy in life. And so you run after that because the devil has fooled you. <clears throat> because then you won't be blessed. You can't be blessed. God only has one way of blessing. It's an obedience to his word. And once you leave that word, you leave the way of blessing and you dry up spiritually and you become unhappy. And that's God's way of bringing us to repentance. Because if it wasn't for that, we'd just wander off and go further and further away. And it's possible too, even to come to church. Even to come to church regularly. Even to come to church twice a Sunday, 52 weeks in the year. And really not be as verse 5 says you come but really it's with drudgery without the ways being in your heart you lack the confidence and joy of Jeho in Jehovah as being your strength and you don't know his blessing and then then the answer would be not well stop attending that's not the answer that only makes things worse because that adds to the other sins breaking the fourth commandment the answer might involve getting up a little bit earlier on a Sunday morning to prepare yourself and then keep attending and repent and seek God's face or to use the language in the book of Revelation remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works because it shouldn't be that way. Now how does the journey go? With this journey to Zion, there are of course going to be difficulties. Difficulties of pilgrimage. Distance is going to be a factor. And Jeroboam, when he wished to cement the schism between the northern and southern kingdoms to establish himself as the one that he might rule, Jeroboam played on the factor of distance in order to stop people going up to the temple in Jerusalem that they may stick with him and his idolatry for he was the man who led Israel into sin. Distance, he said. Too far. Too far. To go. That's God's asking too much of you. And instead I'll make a much closer shrine in Dan or Bethel and you won't have to take such a long journey. 